I ran a hackathon where more than 100 developers submitted their terrible applications. And I'm not being mean. The theme was functionally dysfunctional. So all of the applications worked just in unconventional ways. Over on my Discord channel, there's over 12,000 members. So, you know, maybe join if you want to chat. We threw together the first hackathon with the functionally dysfunctional theme. I have a variety of prizes that I'm giving away, like books, Raspberry Pis, keyboards, and more. And thank you to JetBrains who have sponsored this channel in the past. They gave away a bunch of one-year licenses as prizes as well. So honestly, pretty awesome. There were more than a hundred entries that was submitted by the end of this thing. And oh, there's so many that were so good. However, we had to cut things. We couldn't include everybody. So here's a big list of honorable mentions. Sigma Chat by Kush is a new type of chat application designed for old people like me. Whenever you enter something into the chat, it will automatically convert it to Gen Z slang. Skibbity toilet riz. Like I get it. I get this whole lingo. The design was familiar and for the time needed to make something, the idea was hilarious and great. And I was able to talk to people on stream, which just a reminder, I have been streaming a lot over on Twitch. So if you want to chat about code, projects, and more, make sure you go over there and give me a follow. The Loading Snake by Mini and Nana is a loading screen, but loads on a game of Snake. So when you load the page, Snake begins and you can see the loading progress bar move up as you grab a red dot. And I thought it was a creative clue at the beginning where the snake eats up the first three dots so that you know that it's going on. When you die, you get a 404 page. So make sure you win. AI Gate by Heliacer is a reverse CAPTCHA test. Instead of having to prove you are a robot, you need to prove that you are one. In this test, you're given a clean user interface designed for a human, but the answer all come from clever ways of using the DOM or JavaScript console. I played this one on stream and the audience rightfully called me stupid. This is a really fun game though. You should go and play for yourself because there's a lot of creative ways that's used to get to the next section. Dysfunctional Chat by Shod is a chat application that scrambles the letters you enter as you put them in. It's a funny little chat app if you and your friends wanted to play a game where your friends guess what you're trying to say. Music search by Elias Chen plays into the silly UI of things. What seems to be a simple music search disconnects immediately, but in order to bring it back, you have to drag the box into the connector in order to make it work again. When it comes to the functionality, uh, this is about it, but it's a very clever way of using physics within a UI and create a link between the search and you know the search result items is hilarious. Trash Talks by Sid and Dev with Addy is one of the only mobile applications submitted. It works like a standard AI chat application, but instead has two per personalities that will roast you being Stephen He's dad or Gordon Ramsay. And it's actually crazy. These guys even made a landing page for this website. Like they were taking this to market almost immediately after. Akinator Login by Karim takes the concept of the Akinator, a game where a genie guesses your character through classification and deduction, but does this to your login screen. So it will display all of the usernames uh, in a list, <laughs> like all on the same page uh, and ask if one of them are yours. If not, it will ask you just to create an account. This is a really funny and clever way of doing a login screen mixed with a game. Chatsu by Matthias is a chat application, but the twist is that messages are sent in an Osu style game. So when you enter your message, circles pop up where you have to type the chat message at the same time as the ring goes on the edge. Whatever you get gets added to the chat. Otherwise you just get jumbled soup. This idea was great and honestly, had a fun time playing it despite it being pretty hard. I think if you kept developing this, you would have a pretty interesting typing game. Functionally Dysfunctional by Gear M is a game where you play on top of a music progress bar. When you load in your music, you play a fox that has to avoid eagles flying by on the screen trying to knock your day off. One thing is that the hitboxes were a little bit strange, but in the short amount of time given, uh, it's a really cute idea. And I'd love to see this expanded, uh, especially if there was like, you know, more eagles coming when the pace of the music goes by or something. It was also just kind of motivating to try and get to certain parts of a song I wanted to hear. Drag and drop password is a login screen where the security measure is a bunch of text scrambled across the screen where you have to drag and drop the right pieces into the correct space. It was honestly hilarious just typing in the inputs and then seeing all of the items just show up everywhere. It's almost like a jump scare almost. Shout out by Christopher Huck and Johnny Connery is a media player where the only way to have things play is to speak louder than the video volume. But let me say, I looked like a complete idiot uh, trying this out, and you gave a lot of ammunition for Will to edit this in. Hello, 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 hi, hi, hi. oh. Uh, yeah, this is a go. Oh. This is a good video, this is. Uh, 
it's funny because if you made the software in reverse, um, you basically have a lot of these types of videos. So props to the both of you for doing that if that's what you wanted to hear. Muffle by Marvin Chu is a book reading application designed to help you focus. But how do you focus? <laughs> by removing any sort of noise from your area. It uses your microphone to detect noise. The more noise there is, the more blurry your screen gets, incentivizing you to keep quiet. And it's funny because the application has a nice vibe to it aesthetically. And funny enough, I can actually see scenarios where this would work for me, <laughs> you know? Um, so maybe I will uh, find that purchase link soon. Challenge Pixels is a stock photo image website, but in order to access premium resolutions, you need to enter their CAPTCHA which is a game of Wordle. The idea is great and silly. I love how the Wordle game actually works too. I'd be so pissed off if this actually exists, but that might be a good thing in this scenario. OCR Mailer is an application that lets you send email to whoever you like, but you have to write the email. Now, surprisingly speaking, um, if I had an iPad or something, I think this would be useful, uh, similar to how it works right now with an Apple Pencil. The UI actually looks nice and the AI in hands helps you with the output. But that being said, it's not always correct, but isn't that just the beauty of all of it? <laughs> awesome job. Unconventional login is exactly what it sounds like. It has three login methods, a helpful password reminder screen, the ability to sign in as someone else, or a pinky promise that is your account, which is the most secure way of logging into something. The ultimate form submitter lets you do what all forms should do, let you push custom field names and values to a server. So first you fill in the fields, wait for the data to fill, then add it to the form data box, uh, all to be shipped. The concept is great and uh, it would be cool to expand on this idea. Um, so yeah, good job. Rotary timer is a timer, but old school. You take the old school like rotary wheel and spin to the right location so that you create a custom timer. Um, it's a cool little concept and it actually is improved with the buttery sounds that <laughs> is in it as well that feels nice to use so the chaotic editor is a code editor that is chaotic so whenever you enter code in the editor it will break and you just have to click on things to put it back it looks good as a code editor and the code running away from your cursor will just absolutely drive you insane from an aesthetic point of view it's really good that you got some sort of code editor to work with the syntax highlighting but i mean it's absolutely cursed apart from that clear file explorer is a file explorer with a physics component. So this is actually a desktop application that has pre-built binaries for each uh, operating system. So props to that. But despite this being actually insane and brain rotting, it actually works. Some of the files will sync, and I think that's because the files are larger. Then you have these CAPTCHA pop-ups that require rotating for additional authentication. And it has my face on it, so I already piss a lot of people off to begin with, so thanks a lot, guys. This is actually a hilarious take on the File Explorer idea, which we got a lot of submissions about, but this was by far the best executed. Flappy Scroll lets you play Flappy Bird, but as me, in whatever Chrome tab you want to use. This was fairly light on the theme, but thought the idea was funny and has some potential, so props. Reverse CAPTCHA is a music exploration website with a CAPTCHA that works the opposite way. To complete the CAPTCHA, you have to drag and drop an image of whatever the website asks of you, which this is hilarious considering the whole generative AI thing nowadays. This was also just really fun to do on stream. This was a really, really tough decision that the moderators on uh, my Discord channel and I had to make, but here are the three winners that we decided to go with. The most creative was Poser Detector. Poser Detector is an e-commerce website where when you pick a band t-shirt, it prompts you quickly to name songs of that artist. That way you are wearing a shirt of an artist you actually actually like. And what's funny with this is that you will be judged on getting things wrong, but as well as naming songs that are just obviously popular <laughs> and it's, it's too funny. This was a really creative way and could see it on like an April Fool's website on a big e-commerce platform. We also wanted to award a very technical entry, so we chose Milk Lang. Milk Lang is a programming language where only milk and cow related variables are allowed. From a technical point of view, it's very impressive. It compiles into x86-64 at and syntax, assembly language. <laughs> That was on the readme, okay? But just like the title suggests, you can only name variables based on dairy-related keywords like milk, cow, cream, butter, milk, and more. So my first question is, um, why would you do this and what is wrong with you? So it fit the theme. We also wanted to give an award to one of the best executed submissions of this whole entire hackathon, which goes to There Is No Website. There Is No Website is a website that doesn't exist. So it's kind of like one of those meta games, similar to those of like the Stanley Parable, where you have a narrator walking you through a website as you fumble through everything. The game walks you through some basic components that has a 
funny twist to it if you haven't seen it by now, but the game is fantastic and it actually went viral outside of my channel. You just have to give this a shot for yourself because the more I talk about it, um, the more I spoil. <laughs> so good job. I'm so thankful for everyone who submitted a project. This just turned out a million times better than I ever expected. I also just had a blast uh, chatting with everybody on stream and trying their projects and, you know, you guys roasting me for um, not getting the simplest of things. I'm going to be a solo participant. Oh, are you serious? We just got to let it happen. It's been so long since that's happened. That was, yeah, I got, I got clowned on. But the biggest shout out goes to the Discord moderators that are going to be listed right here, um, who just basically did so much to put all of this together. So thank, uh, thank them very much. Without them, this just wouldn't have been possible. Would you join a hackathon? Let me know in the comments because we're thinking about throwing another one and maybe upping the ante a little bit.